But there's nothing we like more than driving over the top of the walls at 30 to 40 mile an hour, just trundling through the countryside. It's just wonderful. The other thing I really, really enjoy is driving home at two o'clock in the morning, in the dark, when the air is very dense, the engine just sings and doing 70 <clears throat> miles an hour plus, um, it really sings and it's just wonderful. Um, there's nothing like it. Driving at night is fantastic, but in this car it's just wonderful, I love it, love it. Well, my name is uh, Barry, Barry Corkill. I uh, built this car, Scarlotti, and uh, it's been a piece of my life for the last two years, and uh, it's been a source of pleasure. Uh, we've had fantastic times driving it. We've done plenty of uh, car rallies and uh, local car runs, car shows, etc etc my, my car experience uh, where do I start when I left school I went into the motor industry as a mechanic I then did some time in the uh, motor racing industry I then left the motor racing industry and I uh, went into um, being a DJ Whilst being a DJ, I was also working on cars. I had my own garage. Uh, I had a bad accident in 83 when a Land Rover fell on me and crushed me and brought my back in three places. So I had a spell of time in hospital to kind of relocate my life and what I was going to do. And uh, I decided to forget about cars and I went into installing audio-visual equipment, but all the time in the background was cars, 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 cars. And so I've been involved in rallying, I've been involved in racing, I've been involved in auto testing, uh, car shows, many car shows I've been to. And the classic car industry got to a point where the value of cars were going up and up and up and up and up, and it became obscene to the point of fact that a car, really, a lot of the cars are not worth what people are paying for them. They are just a pile of scrap metal and they're only worth what somebody's prepared to pay for them. So I decided, hmm, bunch of scrap metal. I want to build a car made of scrap metal. And this is what I did, built this. I decided I needed a car that was solid, it had to be, uh, it had to have a chassis, obviously. The rules state that if you have a chassis, you can take the body off and you can replace the body with something else without having to go through an IVA or an SVA test. That was the criteria. My three things in life are criteria, constraints, and creativity. Those are the three C's in my life. In everything I do, whether it's the house I build or the workshop I build, criteria, constraints and creativity. And so I started with that. I've always liked Bentleys, the old Bentleys, the old blower supercharged Bentleys. So I decided to build a car based on that theme. I'd already uh, come across the headlights here off a Rolls Royce, um, so I had those to start with and so the car was basically built around these two headlights and uh, from then on everything else I sat down, designed it and it's basically as I designed it on the first piece of paper just as I wanted it. The car itself is quite practical because the boot, um, when I was building it uh, a lot of people in the car clubs said you're going to buy, buy, build a boat tail um, at the back which is which one that goes down like an upturned boat and I thought well if I do that I'm not going to have any boot space so I have built what we call a barge tail or a narrow boat tail uh, at the back which gives me ample boot space which I can get two suitcases I can get a full tent 
get two chairs, we get all sorts of bits and pieces in the back. If we go shopping, we can get everything. If we go to car shows, we've got three chairs, a table, um, we have a small fridge, uh, you know, bag fridge. Uh, we can get all our stuff in there. So it's quite practical, very, very practical. That was one of the criteria. I needed something um, that was, that I could sit up high in, so I could see over the hedgerows. I wanted something that was, um, practical as regards carrying a jack and all the tools that I needed, any tools that I needed or spare water or petrol so there's two compartments in the back, one's for that lot and the other one is for a boot as in a car. It's all these things that you want, the criteria, constraints and creativity. Again it's those three things, it's the things you want, things you can't have and the things I did want was a boot and so I got my boot. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, you don't need to open doors when you go into a car park. Um, the, uh, the doors don't open like that, the doors open like this. So yeah, it's very practical, very, very practical. The construction. Um, the other criteria was to use recycled parts, as many second-hand parts as possible. We're big into recycling in our lives. Uh, we very, very rarely buy anything new. Everything is either second hand or we use scrap. And all the things that came out of here came out of a skip, scrap or second hand, the three S's if you like. A friend of mine builds uh, horse boxes. So he's a great source of materials like alloy and um, wood and other things. So I go to him and I take things out of his skip. The other things are uh, second hand parts. You look out at car boots, you look out on eBay, you look out wherever, uh, car shows you go to, um, car jumbles, and you find all these parts. Um, so yes, getting all these bits and pieces together <coughs> and creating what we've got here. Car's purpose. Ah, now then. When I started to build the car, it was just a project, something I wanted to build. It then started to become a reality and it evolved into something that I could actually put on the road. Um, and the purpose therefore was to go to car shows to show that a car could be built as cheaply as possible with second hand bits. You could recycle an old car or an old vehicle which was going to the scrapyard and to have fun. That's the main thing, is to have fun. And boy, do we have fun in this car. It is the, one of the best, it really is. It attracts attention, uh, people love it, they wave. Uh, it brings a smile on people's faces and that's what life's all about, being happy and bringing a smile on people's faces. So basically, it's done its job and, and we just continue to enjoy going out in it. And it's been built very well so it's it's strong and it should last and so hopefully it should last 25 30 years uh, in its present condition and I can't see any reason why not so that's the future for it really first achievement was driving down to the Isle of Wight um, people thought we were going to put it on a trailer and trailer it down there and I said no nope. We're going to drive it down there, so we drove all the way down to the Isle of Wight. We, we did it in two stops. We did a two-day festival in the Isle of Wight in uh, Newport and Ride. We then drove all the way back, again two journeys, uh, with an overnight stop. Uh, no problems at all, and that was a great achievement for us. This year we decided to do the London Brighton Run. Well, the Isle of Wight was a thousand miles and the London Brighton was 650 miles. It's just an interesting car. It's interesting to talk to people. You meet so many people who come up to you from so many different walks of life and they, 
they want to know what this is and what that is and where does that where did you get that from and what did you do with it? and that's that and that's this all oh, and the salad bowl creates the greatest uh, thing because the ladies always say to me where's the salad bowl you know and I always say it's the biggest boob I ever made which it looks like a boob it's a salad bowl cut in half but it's um, so yeah every time we go anywhere is interesting because people are interested in the car, I'm interested in them, and what I'm more interested in is kind of inspiring people to get out there and utilise second hand or rubbish or scrap. Uh, don't go buy new, buy second hand, and because it's still there to be used. It took me over a two year period, about six months if you compressed it. So if I worked on it completely in those two years for six months, it, it would have been finished. But it took a, a two year, maybe just a bit longer than two year period to get all the things together and everything. But um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's all down to ergonomics, where you sit, where, you, where your brakes are, where your steering is, everything else. That's the, that's, that's the hard part, doing your homework. Drawing, making sure that things are gonna go where they go, and trying things, trying things out. Um, sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. You have to move them a little bit, uh, but it's thinking forward all the time. I'm a great one that I know what I want the end of project to be. As they always say, you don't need to see the top of the staircase to take the first step. Very true. But it always, it's nice to know where you're going. So if you've got an idea where you're going, then you can come back and, and start that first step. Once you've started that first step, it just goes on and on. And, and before you know where you are, you're at the top of the stairs. How hard was it to get the parts? As I say, it, the parts that Originally I wanted to build, I had an idea what I wanted, what I needed and started. Once you've started, then you other bits you'll start looking for and you've got a list of all the bits you want either in your mind or on a piece of paper. Um, I've got these containers full of stuff which I go in and have a look around and see if something will go and something will go there. No, no that won't do and then obviously you start building and then you go back again and you start looking again then you go to car boot sales you go to um, auto jumbles uh, look on ebay and it's always looking sideways if you focus on what you think you need everything you need is probably somewhere here at the side of you it's uh, and you, you miss it if you don't if you don't look so i would say in life that's the best thing to do is to look sideways because you're missing what's going on be aware of everything around you, not just what's in front of you. Biggest difficulties? Ooh, now then. Yes, biggest difficulties. Um, I always find, again, criteria. Do your homework. Constraints. The constraints are the legal things, things you can't have, things you can't do. Um, and then what you're left with is the creative bit where you've got all those bits and you put them all together. Um, the difficulties with it were, um, there wasn't any real difficult, I, I don't find things difficult, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. All the jigsaw pieces are there somewhere, they just have to come into your life. When they do come into your life and they fit together, it's brilliant. Sometimes you get the piece and you think, oh, that goes there. Oh, no, it doesn't go there. Hmm. So you put it on a side and then you find something else that does fit in there. And then you may go back to that piece later on and it'll fit somewhere else. So I have two 40 foot containers full of things that I may need or I may not need. Uh, and I can go in there and I can go through or I can go to the local scrapyard down the road here and pick out things like the, the mudguards. I, didn't know how to, I thought, how am I going to get around putting mud guards on it? Uh, and decided I'd go down to the local scrapyard, buy two spare wheel covers, cut them in half, and I've got two mud guards. Uh, a lot cheaper than having them made. Uh, again, second hand. Um, yeah, the, the difficult, I think the difficult point maybe was the brakes, organising the brakes on it. But I've now got four independent 
braking systems, one on each wheel, so each one is, is individual. Um, so yeah, getting the pipe working, the electrics, yes, that was a headache, the, the electrics, but if you work through it and you do it in a way that um, it's just working things out and you can do it. It takes a long time, but you can do it. So yes, the electrics probably were the longest, the, the most difficult part. Apart from that, everything else was, I found it quite easy. <laughs> oh, more than I expected, more than I expected. I expected when I started, it was a project that I wanted to build just to see if I could build it. It then started to become a reality. Then uh, I got it registered and that was quite straightforward. Uh, once, that, that, once that was out the way, uh, that was maybe the biggest block I thought I may have come across was having it registered with the DVLA, but no, I had a very nice lady called Amanda who rung me up and we discussed things on the phone and, and within 10 days I had all the paperwork back, done, finished. Yeah, so the end result actually has come out better far, far better than I thought it would do, um, which has surprised me. But, as I say, it's such a joy to drive, it's light on the steering, the brakes are fantastic, you've got four, four wheel disc brakes, four wheel drive, automatic gearbox, steering, power steering, it's just a wonderful thing to drive uh, and we just love it and it's comfortable it's comfortable to be in. Um, and when you're out in all this lovely sunshine it's beautiful. What could be better? How often do I drive it? As often as possible. If it's dry and the sun's shining, obviously we're out. Um, we go shopping in it, we go to the local supermarket, we go uh, to the local designer outlet, uh, we go over the walls, we just drive anywhere over, over where we live. We live in a beautiful part of the country and it is fantastic. Um, so we're very lucky to be where we are. I've got this 1934 Austin, which uh, I've got the chassis and the engine gear, but all the running gear. There's no body on it. Uh, it was rotten, was the body. So, uh, but I've got that. So that's another one I want to uh, to build. Um, as regards uh, cars, um, everything else, like we built our own house out of a farm shed. We uh, built our workshop out. This was an old school classroom. The local school was knocking the classroom down, put it in a skip. Uh, I gave them £100 to school funds and built myself a workshop. Um, and so this is, this is the odd things we do. I built a motorhome, uh, I built a trike, I built a car trailer out of a caravan chassis, we built a motorhome out of a minibus, building another motorhome. Continually doing things all the time, building, building, building. Spending my time on one and then moving from that when I get to somewhere I can't go and going back onto another project and then go back to the project and that was, was what this was. I was building this workshop when this was being built and so I was building this at the same time as building this and when you get so far on this and you can't go any further because the brain won't work you go on to this and you do this and then you stop on this and then you go back to this and you back into it again and it, it's amazing how the brain starts to work in between those two. Whenever you're doing something, do something else. Leave it. If you get stuck, go somewhere else. Do something else completely different. Then go back to it and you look at it in a different way and things fit better. While I was building it, my father unfortunately died six months before I finished it. So I actually dedicated the car to him and uh, the model number on the uh, logbook is Eric, that's my dad's name. And so I dedicated this, built it in memory of my dad. Um, I've also, uh, it's driven in memory of my mum who died this year. Um, she loved the car and so every time I drive it, mum and dad are with me. And yes, so it's got a emotional tie too, as well as, um, the recycling part of it is the big thing, I mean the price. 
In total, it cost £1,463 in total. That's to buy the car, to buy the tyres, the paints. The only two things that are new on it really are the paints and the tyres and maybe a few odd bolts and nuts and bits and pieces. The rest of it is completely recycled because in my world, why should I go out and buy a brand spanking new car? If you put a supercar of £200,000 next to this car, I think I would prefer this car than the supercar. The supercar is built for a reason and that is not to drive at 70 mile an hour everywhere, it's to drive at vast amounts of it. Who wants a car that does 200 miles an hour nowadays? We live in a world where resources are getting less and less and less and we need to pull ourselves in. Um, and the idea of building this car was to build it with recycled bits, recycle a car that was going to the scrapyard. It has exceeded that purpose, I think, and I call it recycling in motion, because that's what it is. It's complete recycling in motion. Everything we do in the house or wherever we are, whatever we build, as I say, 85% of what we have is second hand. It's not new because there are too many things in the world that are using the resources as I say we have and we can only use so much and why, why scrap something that is usable? It, it's, it, it's wrong, totally wrong and we should as a, as a person of the world we should all look at ourselves and say where can we stop? this tirade of, of oh, I can't think of the word, it's obscene, I think it's obscene that we, we send so much rubbish to landfill when we, we can use it if we just look at it, as again, look sideways, don't look at, look sideways. Before you throw something away, think, what can I use that for? And you will find a use for it. If you can't, I'd be very surprised. I see the motoring industry as we have two, two levels. We have the brand new cars that are being built using resources that we don't really, that we shouldn't be using and we have electric cars on the other hand and people are scrapping new cars to buy electric cars when the car they're scrapping is usable and everybody should that's why classic cars people who are running classic cars from the 60s and 70s are using a vehicle that is basically it's more environmentally friendly using a car from the 60s and 70s because it hasn't gone to landfill, it hasn't been scrapped, it's still usable. Uh, any car that's been used for over 50 years surely has got to be a car that is environmentally friendly. Um, this car comes in the middle, so it's not a new car and it's not an electric car. Um, I think people who do a journey of 100 miles in a day should have electric car. If their commute to work is less than 100 miles a day, they should have an electric car. That's great. But we don't have the infrastructure at the moment. And I don't think in my lifetime there will ever be the infrastructure. It's an impossibility. Um, so we are going to have to rely on fossil fuels uh, for the next, I would think, probably 40 to 50 years. Um, Anybody who is using fossil fuels in a car that is 50 years old is probably still using the same amount of fossil fuels that a new car is using, but a new car has taken so many resources and so much metal that, and so many plastics and, and more cars nowadays are built with plastic rather than metal. Uh, plastic is not recyclable metal is recyclable.
I would like to say to the people of the world, and we are all people of the world, whether we're whatever nationality we're from, it doesn't matter whatever colour we are, it doesn't matter whatever gender we are, it doesn't matter. We are all people of the world and we have to look after this world. Plastics are ruining the world, we need to stop using plastics, we need to recycle more, we, and cars like this can be built. If you put your mind to it, you can build a car like this, and if the authorities will allow cars like this to be on the road, then we would all be in a better position in our lives. And we would have so much more fun because these cars just, ah, oh, this car just is, is my life. It's wonderful. Me and my missus, we have so much fun in this car. Get one built. All you people out there, just think about building a car. Even a classic car with an electric motor in, fine. But whatever you do, it's got to be using recycled stuff. Enjoy your life. Have a good time. Build a car. <laughs>